Hi, I'm going to talk about how we design machine learning models when annotators disagree on what the right answer ought to be. Imagine you're training an AI model to remove toxic comments from an online community. Should this training example, which is making some aggressive comments about religion, be an example of content to remove or an example of content to keep up? This is a tough one. It turns out that in the public data set we took this from, half of people feel either way about this comment. So in today's typical supervised learning pipeline, we then model a sort of aggregate pseudo-human, predicting the majority vote label while ignoring annotators who disagree with the majority. Or maybe you could do a bit better and decide that your AI should predict a 40-60 distribution. But if you're a practitioner who's then got to decide whether to remove this comment or not, what do you do with that information? There's not really a good answer. So let's ask a different question. Whose voices is our model emulating here? It turns out that if our training data were labeled entirely by white males, the distribution slightly tips toward leaving the comment up. But if our data were labeled by groups that are often targets for online harassment, like women or black individuals, you'd see the distribution swing towards labeling this comment as toxic. And voice matters. Healthy spaces and communities have their own distinct norms and values. Non-parents shouldn't decide which topics are fair game in a parenting form, and the political problems taking place in the Star Wars universe require a very different standard of discussion than those taking place in a forum on Saudi Arabia. One model trained from one data set won't fit all these communities, and just as importantly, nor will it allow for an opportunity to figure out what will fit. Because today, whose voice the AI emulates is a decision baked to this training data here and then swept under the rug in AI systems. As a result, for many practitioners, the answer of whose voice their AI is emulating is left implicit within the data collection and training procedure. In this talk, I'm going to introduce jury learning, a supervised learning architecture, a technical and normative approach that lets practitioners articulate exactly the voices they want determining the behavior of their classifier, and in doing so, often changes in AI's predictions. This is an important problem because in user-facing tasks ranging from not just toxicity detection, but also from poster design to cancer treatment, one third of experts disagree with a typical decision. So if we could make voice explicit, we could also weight treatment opinions from doctors with particular expertise, or select design decisions from designers trained to a particular school of thought. Or maybe a practitioner isn't sure who to decide with, and they could reason over the decisions that different people would make. What we need, and what our research introduces, is an interactive system where, when annotators disagree, we can choose which voices our classifier listens to. So how could such a system be possible? Well, here's our key insight. Data sets are ultimately made up of individual people. So instead of modeling some aggregate pseudo-human, let's model individual people. We're going to demonstrate that it's possible to model individual voices in your training data set, enabling us to then design a system for interactively exploring, tuning, and shifting the behavior of the classifier by explicitly choosing which annotators our classifier will emulate in what proportion. Let's walk through the jury learning architecture. Given an input, practitioners start by defining a jury composition, selecting from characteristics in their data set. For instance, if a data set contains each annotator's political leanings, then the practitioner can say they like, for instance, two liberal jurors. And for this example, we'll also choose two jurors who are parents with high school diplomas. And we now have these four empty juror slots, and we need to choose individual annotators from the data set to fill them. So we'll start with all the annotators in the data set. And again, these are real individual people. And just like in any typical data set, they've each only annotated some small subset of the examples in the full data set. And then, then we can filter to all of the relevant annotators in our data set. Uh, jury learning currently requires the data sets contain these explicit labels about annotators. And we then randomly select a matching annotator from the data set to fill each juror slot. And the AI then predicts how each individual juror would vote using all the data we have about their annotations and the annotations of other similar jurors, giving us this jury's verdict. I'll talk about the model architecture that powers this in a minute. And of course, this can work with regression too, where we predict a numeric value instead of a yes or no class. So randomly selecting one set of jurors gives an idea of what one particular set of people might think. But jury learning enables something that was impossible with real world juries, which is we can resample jurors many times, creating many parallel juries. And then each parallel jury has its own predicted verdict. And so we get this distribution of jury verdicts. Each dot is a resampled jury. And then for a single final decision, we can take the median, giving us a median of means estimator. 
And by modeling individual annotators, we've enabled interactive sense making about the nature of disagreement. For instance, we can plot the distribution over our model's predictions for every annotator in the data set who we could have chosen as a juror versus our model's predictions for the actual jurors we selected, showing us that, for instance, Democrats are far from monolithic and their views about this common. All right, so that's the interaction. Now, walking back to that prediction step, how can we predict each annotator's response to some unseen example? Well, we assume that we have a typical classification data set. Each of these jurors are, again, just annotators. And like a typical data set, we assume annotators have some mostly disjoint, occasionally overlapping set of training examples they annotated, and a bunch of training examples they didn't annotate. And of course, we have this uh, not just for annotators we select as jurors, but for every annotator. And for every annotator, we have a bunch of characteristics. And then what we want to predict is each juror's response to some unseen example. So to do that, we designed an architecture that co-trains a transformer-based text classifier to use as content embeddings within a deep and cross-network recommender system, which learns embeddings for each annotator and characteristic. And our technical evaluation found that this architecture achieves steadier performance. All right, so before we continue, it's important to make clear that while we view jury learning as a step forward, it is by no means a panacea. It will create or at least bring previously hidden problems to the forefront. One challenge, Jurors can be biased. For instance, selecting a woman doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a juror who supports women's rights. Our perspective here is that there's two orthogonal and complementary worldviews. Today, most approaches assume that the world or their data set is broken and then applies post hoc statistical transformations to try to de bias model outputs. With jury learning, we're saying that it could also be really useful to select or train the people whose voices should influence the model because it's often more tractable to do the latter. A second consideration, who determines the jury compositions? Well, let's first note that every data set already has an implicit jury. They already have some existing distribution of annotators who end up influencing classification decisions. What jury learning does is make that fact explicit and visible and easily changeable. It provides a new way to communicate and debate whose perspectives are being included. Our take is that when using jury learning, practitioners should make jury compositions transparent and provide stakeholders with a voice in selecting them. So now I want to touch on our field evaluation. We gave jury learning to 18 moderators, and one question we asked is, do moderators author juries that are more diverse than the composition of a typical data set? And here's what the composition of a typical data set looks like. It is 74% white. Um, but we can see here that when we gave moderators jury learning, they chose to create juries that represent a much broader cross-section of society. Another question we can ask is, do the predicted verdicts of juries composed by moderators make different decisions than a standard state-of-the-art classifier? We found that 14% of classification decisions changed and that the most likely to flip were comments that were the most divisive. And these comments on the edge are really important because behaviors in edge cases often become de facto platform policy. So that was jury learning. Uh, we hope that when annotators disagree, jury learning empowers practitioners to make explicit, carefully considered choices about which voices their models reflect. Thank you.